Hello, everyone. Welcome to our public. Today, my colleague Zhang Fan and I will introduce their trust cloud VPN, Aston VPP and YGUT. My name is Ni Hongjun. I'm a software engineer from Intel. I'm working on VPP, cloud networking, and network security. This is today's agenda. Firstly, I will introduce industry challenges for the networking security, and then we will introduce uh, their trust network access architecture and the key functions. Then we will propose our reference architecture for the secure gateway, and then illustrate the details for each uh, component. Then our colleagues fan will introduce the VPP and the YGUT uh, implementation and uh, optimizations. Then we will summarize all the uh, topics here. First, uh, we will introduce the industry challenges for networking and the security. You know, with the uh, ep uh, epidemic, um, more employees are working from home. As a result, more users, devices, application services, and the data are uh, moving from the traditional enterprise primate to different locations, such as the age, um, home, etc. Here is uh, some numbers to represent the trend. You know, more than 50% of companies have uh, more employees working at home and remotely, and then more than 60% of uh, workers use their devices when they are working at home. And then uh, more than 80% of devices are not managed by the enterprise and the IT administrators. And uh, you know, more than 50% of uh, company application services are running on the cloud right now. But um, let's say 10% of organizations have reported that they have no aware of what these devices are accessing their uh, network. As a result, this propose many challenges to the enterprise networks and uh, uh, the industry networks. So we need to propose some uh, gateways and uh, solutions to address these problems. Okay, this is uh, uh, zero trust network access architecture to fix uh, these uh, industry challenges. It's uh, proposed by some guys uh, 10 years ago, but uh, recent, recent years they are become more popular and uh, become the predominant industry uh, trend. In this architecture, there are some key components here. Firstly, uh, it's the uh, secure gateway. It will um, uh, build uh, secure channels with the remote employees and uh, the, imp the remote employees will access the legacy services or vendor uh, services through the secure gateway. And uh, for the new applications or services, it can be running directly on the private services and uh, uh, the private services can uh, communicate with the employees directly. And uh, for some untrusted client, they can access the uh, load balancer uh, through a, through a um, planned way and then the load balancer will uh, provide services to these uh, clients uh, with the application servers between the load balancers and applications that build the secure channels in each other. For the control panel, it's a central point uh, which provides uh, access ground for the clients, uh, provides um, so, uh, service discovery and the key management. It also provides the key distributions to different parties. 
the sensor. Okay, here is the uh, detailed uh, function split for the zero trust networking access. Uh, there are two main parts here. One is the control plane on the top, another is the teleplane on the bottom. Uh, we'll explain, explain the control plan first. For the control plan, uh, it provides um, uh, more rich features for this. Uh, for ex I will explain it one by one. For the user identity, it uh, gets some uh, IDs from the third party uh, ID providers, uh, uh, which IDs are leveraged to uh, verify the client is a valid one. And uh, for the multi-fact authentication, you know, uh, in order to build a secure channel between each other, uh, firstly, they need to, between the client and the plan, to uh, authenticate each other to make sure uh, the peers are uh, valid one. And uh, the trust execution environment is used to provide a secure uh, environment to running applications such as the vault to and to store and distribute keys. The message security is used to be built a secure control channel between the control plane and the data plane. And uh, you know, uh, to automatic the service distribution, we need to leverage the service discovery component to um, uh, discovery each parties automatically. And the policy control is used to uh, provide uh, policies for different uh, data plan components. And also to verify the uh, uh, customers. And the key management is used to store uh, the keys from the data plan and uh, key distribution is used to, to distribute the queues to different data plan. Okay, on the bottom side, it's the data plan. Uh, it also uh, provides uh, features, uh, in, except the normal forwarding and the routing features. It also to provide the message security, which is used to build a secure control channel to the control plan and to exchange the keys with the control plan. And the service discovery is also used to provide automatic service discovery for different data plans. And for the DDoS protection, it's used to provide anti-DDoS attacks. Uh, the data security feature is used to build a secure data channel between different uh, uh, networking functions so that uh, the traffic can be delivered uh, in the data uh, channel. And then the policy enforcement uh, is working as an enforcement point, which accepts the uh, policies from the control plan and then uh, execute on each flows. And the data uh, inspection is, is used to identify the applications to provide the visibility for the data plan. And the threat detection is used to uh, detect the malware and uh, defense them. Then uh, we will propose uh, a new secure gateway reference architecture uh, for the zero trust network access. Uh, there are three uh, networking functions here. Mm, I will explain it one by one. On the left side, this is the client. Uh, the key features is the white guard in the operating system and also the uh, WGSD, which means the so, uh, white guard service discovery component. The client can be run on the Linux, Windows, iOS, Android, and etc. different operating systems. On the right side, it's the secure gateway. 
here we leverage the VPB, which is an open source project uh, to provide the uh, rich features for the secure gateway. And I think the one key feature is the wireguard and to provide the uh, secure channel between the client and the control controller. And then we will leverage the TADK to provide the data exploitation and also the uh, threat detection. And we need to integrate different uh, uh, control plan demos to provide uh, keys exchange, such as WGSD client to exchange information with the controller, the FLR uh, routing demo to provide routing uh, features and the start to provide the data uh, expectation and also the threat detection. On the top side, which is the controller, uh, there are some key features you need. Uh, one is we leverage the Linux kernel wireguard features to, pro to build a secure uh, control channel between the client and the controller and also the secure gateway and the controller. And then the core DNS and the WGSD server is used to provide the uh, uh, DNS service to provide with the service discovery and uh, also the keys exchange and the distribution between the client and the secure gateway. The we will leverage the Intel SJX to provide a trust execution environment. And then on it, the water will run and get some signed keys, uh, uh, certifications to, from the CA, and also get the IDs from the third party ID providers. So that's the uh, reference architecture for our um, solution. Here's the roadmap for the secure gateway. There are uh, many layers on it. We will uh, explain them from bottom to the top side. On the bottom side is the hardware layer. Uh, here we will leverage the CPU, the NIC, the IPU, and the QT Torbino uh, switch chippers to provide high performance data plan. On the second operating system layer, the secure gateway can run on different operating systems, such as the Debian, Vant, Red Hat, SUSE, etc. On the third layer, it's the common libraries layer. Here, we will leverage some open source subjects, such as the DBDK, the VPP, the TDK, to provide the basic features and for the secure gateway. Then, then on the network layer, we will provide the IPv4, IPv6 routing and the integrate with the FR routing uh, demo to provide uh, complete uh, routing features. And we also provide uh, elephant flow detection and the distribution to detect the elephant flow. And then on the connectivity layer, we, we offer uh, different uh, secure protocols such as IPsec, YGUT, SSL, Quick, the switcher. We also integrate different uh, uh, control demos such as the WGSD and the Strongsware to provide the uh, control plan message exchange. For the security services layer, we leverage the TADK to, to offer data inspection and also the threat detection. Uh, the slot is also be integrated with the data plan. For the many management layer, we provide the different uh, northbound interfaces such as the NetConf, RESTConf. We also provide the uh, agent to integrate with different controllers and orchestration projects, such as Vault, 
CoinDS, or, or we are integrated with OpenS to provide the edge services, and also the Kubernetes for to provide the cloud integration, and also Open Daylight for the SDN controller. Okay, we will uh, explain the details for the uh, detailed data flow. Uh, here, there are many steps here. We will explain them step by step. For the step one here, uh, the, uh, we will leverage the Intel SGX to provide a trust execution environment and uh, the watch were running uh, on the uh, trust environment, trust execution environment. And then the step two, the watch will get some signed keys and the certification credentials from the CA. And the step three, the watch will get the detailed IDs from the external third party providers such as activity AD, G suits, WeChat, Intalk, etc. And the step four, the core DNS and uh, uh, why guard service discovery server were running on the uh, controller. It provides the service discovery and also the keys uh, ex exchanges to different uh, data plans. Uh, and for the Step five, the WhiteGuard service discovery client are running on the client and the security gateway separately. Then for the step six, the client will build a secure WhiteGuard controller channel to the, uh, with the controller. And uh, also the secure gateway also builds a, a separate why guard a channel with the controller? When the secure why guard uh, controller channel uh, appears, uh, the client and and the controller, the secure gateway and the controller will exchange some message through this uh, why guard channel. Uh, for the step seven. Through the uh, wireguard channel between the client and the, the controller, the client will send send some DNS DNS uh, service discovery query to the controller. Then for uh, for step eight, the controller uh, uh, get this information from the client. It will verify the client ID from the message through the external CA or ID providers to make sure the client is a valid one. For the step nine, the controller will check, will check the policy control to make sure the client could have the right to access the request services. If the uh, result is okay, then the controller will distribute the wireguard information between the client and the secure gateway. For the, for the step 11, you know, here the client uh, has no the peer information uh, from the secret gateway, then it will initiate the handshake to the secret gateway to build a, a, a secure data channels. Finally, for the step 12, the client and the secret gateway can tra deliver traffic uh, between the client and the secret gateway in the secure data channel. Here we will explain how, how the watch is running on the SGX. 
We will take uh, auth zero as example for the uh, ID providers. Here, there are two uh, part, two areas. One is the untrusted area. Here, the uh, it's on the out bottom. Here, the uh, host operating system is running here, such as the Linux. And then on the top, on top of the host Linux, it's the trusted and protected area. It's running within the uh, SGX in order to provide uh, uh, customers with a better SGX level uh, applications. Uh, uh, Oclam is used to provide uh, um, thread safe uh, and thread safe library operating systems. It, it can enable um, uh, legacy applications to running on the uh, uh, trusted execution environment with little or no uh, modifications of the source code. So uh, customers' applications can run it with little effort on it. Here, uh, we'll take the word as example. What can run on the Oclam? Uh, transparently. Here we will explain the details for this. For example, if the uh, customer want to uh, verify itself, it will send a, a message to the world to authenticate itself with also zero credential. Then the step two. The watch will uh, communicate with the external third party ID provider, uh, also zero here, to verify the credential is a valid one. If the credential is uh, valid, then the watch will access the policy control to get uh, uh, policies and attach these policies to a token. Then uh, the watch will return the talking to the client. Okay, that's all from part. Then uh, welcome my colleague Zhang Fan to, to illustrate it more about the VPB, wire guard implementation, wire guard optimizations, and uh, other features. Welcome, Zhang Fan. Thank you. Thanks, Hongqing, for the nice speech. Now it's my turn. My name is Fan Zhang. I'm a net, uh, network software engineer in Intel. And I've been working on crypto related uh, work for DBDK and uh, uh, FIDO VPP for over six years. So uh, today I will be introducing their um, FIDO VPP WireGuard optim optimization. So before entering into the details, I want to shortly describe how what is FIDO and what is VPP. For who you don't know, uh, FIDO is an open source project on the Linux Foundation uh, sub, uh, umbrella. Within the FIDO, uh, it has a, a number of uh, open source projects within. Uh, VPP is the biggest one of them. So what is VPP? VPP is the acronym for the vector packet processing. It is a universal layer two to their full network stack data plane application. So it has the uh, Linux and the FreeBSD support and it supports uh, a great number of uh, user space kernel bypass uh, new, uh, network interface card drivers. Also to uh, run, to also make it running well on container and virtualization environment, it has the kernel interface such as NetMap and the TAP. So it can be easily configured as a network uh, appliance, network infrastructure, VNF, or CNF application uh, easily. So uh, we find the VPP's architecture. Let me zoom down myself over here. 
as you can see on the graph on the right, uh, it is a pluggable and uh, it is easy to understand the extent uh, uh, architecture. So for, as you can see, for all the functionalities, each sub functionality block, uh, block is organized inside the VPP as a graph node. You can treat a graph node as the entry for packet input or other, you know, other uh, medium layer input. And you can have them processed by link, the uh, link the graph node of certain functionality uh, uh, below their packet input graph node. Which make, is, uh, make this graph node architecture very easy to, um, to reconfigure, to reorganize, and it's easy to plug in your, new, your own graph node. So uh, for user, you can easily uh, implement your, pl your own plugin to have a full control to replace an existing graph node by your own plugin graph node or in search uh, uh, your own graph node uh, in between any of existing graph node to reorganize the processing pipeline for your own purposes. So uh, the plugin graph nodes can uh, are easy, uh, are equal citizens as all every uh, existing graph nodes, which has the um, uh, quite a big and uh, abundant flexibility. But the performance is utterly important for network stack processing. So with the VPP, you can easily to achieve L2 cross uh, forwarding by over 16 uh, mini packets per second per CPU core. With the latest uh, Icelake CPU, you can easily achieve over 20 million packets per second per Icelake core under the L3 forwarding uh, uh, application. Also, it is the, the deterministic. So it can achieve zero packet drops and the uh, latencies roughly 16, uh, uh, roughly 15 microseconds. And uh, we ensure the performance and the latency uh, results to be the optimal at all times by utilizing the daily, weekly, and the monthly test under another uh, open source project called CSIT to run, the, run those tests constantly. And it also has great scalability. VPP can achieve linear scaling with the core and thread counts which means by adding a call, you can get fixed amount of extra throughput. It also supports millions of concurrent L2 or L3 tables entries, which means for a million flow use case, you can easily uh, uh, make it working uh, perfectly under VPP. It also has a very friendly interface for the developers. You can check the runtime counter for literally anything inside the VPP. You can check the cycle cost for each graph node to process a package. You can get the throughput easily, and you can get the IPC uh, data. You can get the error counts uh, for any package coming in into VPP. Also, you can, you can get a full pipeline tracing facilities by adding the tracer from the input node, which means you can see the whole lifetime of a package into the VPP and exit from VPP. Also, it has the multi-language API binding implemented inside the VPP, make it work in nicely with other languages. Uh, in the end, it has, VPP has its own command line introspection which means you can use the uh, command, command line inside the VPP easily to check, to reconfigure the whole VPP processing pipeline. Coming to the VPP WireGuard. So VPP WireGuard as other graph nodes has the API interface and the COI command interface. 
it allows you to do all kinds of Wiregard uh, configuration inside the VPP. Uh, on the right hand side, the, all the data structures of Wireguard is abstracted in the three yellow boxes. So it has a timer controlled by each and every uh, you know, peer's uh, lifetime. And it has the peer data structure, which contains all the uh, IP and the key information for, this, uh, for, uh, for a peer. Also, it has the interface, um, interface data structure that interact with the other graph nodes. Uh, in the, the blue boxes are the implementations of the control path of Wireguard. So uh, you can do uh, IP binding cookies uh, easily with VPP. And your, all the key generations uh, of, uh, of uh, using the ecliptic curve algorithm and using the Blake 2 for the hash can be done inside the VPP easily. And the key exchange uh, on top of the noise protocol can be done automatically, automatically inside the VPP. Those, uh, those helps you to um, communicate with the other peer uh, on, with the wire guard easily. So when the peer, is, uh, the peer uh, uh, handshake is finished and the key are exchanged, it comes to the red box of data pass processing. So uh, VPP WireGuard currently supports the uh, outbound in-cap and inbound decap. It also supports the, all the stack related operation, uh, including the crypto. On the VPP WireGuard, it utilizes the VPP's crypto infrastructure. Crypto infrastructure inside the VPP is a shim layer uh, to bind different uh, crypto engines for different crypto uh, algorithms. Currently, to support WireGuard, we have three crypto engines. So we have IPsec multi-buffer, OpenSSL, and uh, Intel QAT, which is the quick assist technology uh, dedicated uh, crypto accelerator card. So under the help uh, of IPsec multi-buffer and QED, we can do ChaCha20 encryption or decryption, and we can do Poly1305 authentication, tag generation, and verification. So we have been done throughout the code, you know, uh, investigation of VPP wireguard implementation. We find a few uh, places uh, probably find you, you find it interesting as well. So first, WPP WireGuard implementation is ported from OpenBSD WireGuard implementation, which means its implementation is with the kernel packet processing techniques in mind. It uses the heavy OpenSSL library to process the crypto operation, uh, such as ChaCha and the poly uh, encryption and authentication respectively. And it has no batching processing for, uh, or packet buffer prefetching uh, to reduce the data or instruction cache misses, which have some performance penalty. Also, it doesn't have the uh, hardware crypto acceleration support, such as Intel uh, Quick Assist Technology Card support. So with those uh, findings in mind, we started to optimize the VPP wireguard. So what do we did? So first, we enabled Intel AVX512 instruction to accelerate ChaCha20 Poly1305 crypto processing. So compared to AVX2, which is 128 bits uh, in, uh, register length, AVX512 supports a 512 bits of, of data length, uh, which is, allows us to push double the size of the AVX512 data uh, to process in a single uh, CPU cycle, which means double the throughput 
compared to the AVX2 implementation of Charger instruction, uh, Charger and Poly operations. But AVX1212 is CPU architecture dependent, which means if you write a code with AVX1212, it probably won't work with the, the, the CPU architecture doesn't have AVX512 supported. And also for AVX2, it probably doesn't work on those CPU architecture that's, which doesn't have AVX2 support, uh, support enabled. To conquer this problem, we don't want a VPP that can run on one CPU architecture that doesn't want the other or we don't want it runs the best on one CPU architecture and the performance is poor in the other CPU architecture. So to, to overcome this, we adopted Intel IPsec multi-buffer library into VPP. So we abstracted Intel IPsec multi-buffer uh, libraries API wrapped by an uh, Intel IPsec multi-buffer crypto engine inside the VPP under the crypto infrastructure. So in VPP 21.0 release, we added the Chacha Poly supported to Intel IPsec multi-buffer uh, engine. So uh, the beauty of this is Intel IPsec multi-buffer has the best optimization per crypto algorithm per CPU architecture that is supported, which means the best performance you can squeeze from crypto uh, for one CPU architecture, you can do the same for the other CPU architecture, which means it runs uh, equally the best in all CPU architectures. Of course, the uh, throughput won't be equal, but efficiency wise, it is which in the end helped us to gain the performance by 20% by uh, running the ChaCha20 and the Poly uh, operations. But we didn't end up there. What we did next, as, as we just discussed, uh, the VPP WireGuard existing operation doesn't have batch processing. The batch processing uh, lacking means when you process a package for outbound, uh, WireGuard outbound, for example, we are first processing the WireGuard in cap, then we processing the crypto, which means when you processing the next package, the instruction cache, which already stored in the CPU cache to process crypto will be flushed out by the uh, WireGuard in-cap in uh, processing for the next package. You CPU needs more time to reload those stack processing again from memory. To batch those things up, we can split the whole WireGuard implementation to by two stages. First, we st processing stack in a full burst of up to 256 package. Then we process the crypto for the same full burst of 200, up to 256 packets. Now we have the best uh, ca instruction cache utilization for both operations. Then we do prefetches. So prefetches help get the, rare, get the package data to be in the data cache of the CPU before it's needed. So when we process the current packets, we prefetch the next package into the cache, which means when the next packet is to be processed, the data is already in the cache. The batch plus the prefetching, we helped optimize the wire guard performance to to another 50% more. Again, we didn't stop there. So when the batch is enabled, we find the performance could be higher by enabling the QET co-processor uh, assistant processing. So 
AVX512 and the IPsec multi-buffer help you to perform the best when you use CPU uh, instructions to process the Chacha Poly uh, crypto operation, but it still requires some cycles. A CPU has a fixed amount of cycles available per second, which means if you use those cycles on crypto, you get less cycles to process the package. Then if we can offload the whole crypto processing to a dedicated uh, hardware that's specifically processing crypto, such as Intel QAT card, we can help uh, squeezing more cycles to process a uh, stack, which means more throughput. So we offload the crypto processing to QAT or other CPU threads we can help save more CPU cycles to process more packets. How we did is the graph on the right. So first, when the packets come in, we do a FIP lookup. So when we find out all oh, these packets need to be processed by WireGuard outbound, we push those packets into the WireGuard output to no uh, graph node. Within the graph node, for every package, we first do a peer lookup. When we find that this peer is alive, the key is not expired, then we enqueue the packets uh, crypt, uh, in, into the crypto uh, processing into a, a crypto frame. And through this VPP crypto async infrastructure, to call an enqueue handler inside the infrastructure, which in the end will be assembling this crypto request into the QET crypto recognizable request. And to do that, we use the DBDK CryptoDev API under, under VPP to, uh, to basically enable this crypto offload. So when the NQ is finished, we basically can forget about this package. We start to process next, next, past, uh, next packet in the burst. So when the all packets are, are enqueued to QET, we have a crypto dispatch input node, which is running in the, pool, uh, the pooling manner will constantly pull from this uh, QET uh, uh, egress queue. So what it does, when QET has some jobs finished, uh, the crypto dispatch will call this crypto infrastructure's DQ handler that get those packets back. When the packets is getting back, we push them into the WireGuard output post the graph node which means all the wire guard processing is finished by this point. Then we can send the packets out to internet. By enabling the QET acceleration, we achieved more than three times more throughput than the uh, IPsec multi-buffer accelerated uh, wire guard throughput. Okay. So uh, what have we talking about today? So we have zero trust networking, which is a promising domain on enterprise network transformation. And we have the controllers acting as a central point to service discovery, to access grant and to key distribution and et cetera. And we have a VPN to act as a gateway which performance building secure channel with the clients. We have TEE leverages at once the CPU feature to build a secure uh, execution environment. So to accelerate the data path, we have the wire guard to enable the IP second multi-buffer libraries, AVX 512 vector instruction support. And we also leverage hardware accelerated crypto processing such as Intel uh, Quick Assist technology card to accelerate the WireGuard data path. 
And uh, this project is, uh, we cannot finish that alone. So we thank, uh, we thank the people listed on this, graph, uh, on this page uh, for helping and supporting this project to the current stage. And that's it. Uh, time for questions and answers. Back to host. Thank you.